Hi guys, it's Sherry. So today we're going to be covering a glass and this is the glass that I chose. It's basically called a beer glass. I'll put a link in the description for you if you're interested. But the first thing we are going to do is I have my white Primo clay rolled out on my thickest setting and then I have my blue clay rolled out on the thickest setting. And I am just going to slice these diagonal. And it doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm just going to flip them right over onto each other. Then we will just take our clay and put them right up next to each other. And then kind of mush them together. So they stick together. Okay. And then what I am going to do is I am going to roll this through my pasta machine on my thickest setting. I'm going to go down this way and then I'm going to fold it. And I'm going to continue doing that so everything blends nicely together. So this is my first pass through. And now I'll take it, fold it over, and continue running it through. And then this will be on the bottom. Okay, so this is the blend that we got so far. And I am actually going to take this down to my third thickest setting. Okay, now look how beautiful that blends together. Just absolutely gorgeous. So make sure when you lay this down, you are laying the white on the top because I made a mistake the last time and I did the blue on the top. So we want the white on the top. And I just want to kind of make sure I am going to have plenty of clay, which I pretty sure I will. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So my first step I want to do is just straighten this out because we can't use um, this part here. We have to have a straight edge. And then I have this silk screen, which is absolutely beautiful. It's called Ocean of Dreams from Create Along. And I absolutely love it. You can see it has the whale and the mermaids and the octopus, fish, the little baby turtle all kinds of little sea creatures. So this is what we are going to be using. So lay your silk screen down. I'm going to get it close to the edge. Make sure I'm getting as much of my silk screen onto my piece. Make sure it's nice and flat. And then I'm just going to get my black acrylic paint. Got my squeegee and then I am just going to go right over it. We're going to carefully lay this right back down. Just kind of push it down with your squeegee because you don't want it shifting on you. Okay, I believe we will only need two, but just to be safe, just in case we need a little extra, we are going to do a little bit of a third one. Because sometimes you need a little extra. We're going to let this completely dry. And then we will do the other side as well. All right. So make sure you rinse out your um, silk screen right away so it doesn't get ruined. 
All right, so my pieces are completely dried. I did both sides. They look beautiful. So our next step is to start putting these on. So we wanna get our tissue blade and we want to slice right at the edge of our ink or I should say our paint. So we have that and then we have that and I am going to clean up this edge too because I want to make sure that there is no blue showing like um, no blank spots showing I should say. I'm going to take my cup, my glass, I'm going to go right around. I'm going to try to make sure this part is 100% straight. First, let's make sure our glass is nice and clean in that area. Because we don't want fingerprints and stuff popping through. Okay. So I'm going to go right to the top. Try to get nice and straight if possible. Remember not to rub, just press down because you do not want to smear your paint. So now you can see the inside. Okay, so now I'm actually just going to cut this straight down because I want a nice straight line again. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this one. Let's make sure, yep, we got both sides looking good. Okay. And then we're going to carefully clean this. I'm going to stick my hand inside. I want to carefully clean this. And then I am going to, I want to try to line. No, I can't. So just carefully put those pieces together like that. And see, that's why we did the third sheet because I had the feeling we are going to be a little short. And I want to press those together nicely. Because we don't want to really see that line. Okay. Okay. 
and we will do this one as well. We need a small area, so I actually would like to get this octopus area because I really like him. So I'm going to go straight down there. And make sure that that area is clean again. Let me cut this straight because this is not straight. Let me go right here. And now I want to kind of keep my cup up a bit and feel exactly where my clay ends. And just kind of follow that. Get my top here. I want to clean this up. So I'm just going to run my blade right over it. And all I'm doing is kind of edging the top so it's not so squared off looking. So I'm kind of rolling it up a bit just to flatten the sides out a bit. And then I'll clean it up again. So I don't want nothing at the very top. Okay. Okay, now I gotta get my Just carefully pull all that off, clean it up the best you can. I'm going to lay my pieces right next to each other. I was really hoping I could get that fully. Hmm. I just need a tiny, tiny bit more. I'm just going to piece this all together because this will be the bottom portion. There we go. So there would be the underneath, and we'll just put this right on here. And 
And we're just going to carefully blend this together so it's one piece. You can see I'm not rubbing it. I am like rolling my piece together. Okay, there's a air bubble there. So we just want to slice and then press that together. And I'm slicing where the paint is not. So I'm slicing right in the blue area. This way it'll be easier for me to blend that back together. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So this is what we got so far. I want to do this. Make sure your sides, you know, let me get all this clay off me. Make sure your, your seams are nicely put together and you can even take something small and lightweight and kind of blend them together that way. Okay, so once you make sure no air bubbles are in here and your seams look really well, we're gonna put this in the oven. I'm going to bake this just for about, I say 20 minutes, because I just wanna make sure the paint is not going to smear when we play around with this. So put it in for 275, because it is Primo clay for about 20 minutes, and then we'll come back. While we wait for the cup to finish in the oven, we will get started on the next part. So what we need to do is just get some clay and our cutter. So I'm actually going to take all my scrap here and I'm going to run this through my pasta machine on my thickest setting and then we'll start cutting out our stuff. Okay, so I have my clay rolled out. It doesn't matter what color it is because um, we're going to be using pan pastels. So let me get my pastels. And since we have our sea life, which is usually pretty colorful, we're going to go with some nice colors. Um, what I ended up doing was I got this mold and it has a little fish and a seahorse and has a little like um, dolphin, starfish and a crab. I am not gonna use the dolphin because I think it might be a little too tiny, but I like the seahorses. And then I did the little starfish. I'm gonna open this up just a tad bit. Then we have our little crab here. And then I did a couple fish. But I also have some cutters. So I wanna play around with these and check these out as well. I want to use, cause some of these are really detailed. So I'm going to use some of my saran wrap. Make sure my cutters don't get stuck in the clay. I'm going to cut out a couple seahorses and just see how these are because I have not used any of these cutters yet. And then I have this really cute turtle. And we have a seal. I don't know what I'm really gonna put on the cup until it's here and I can really see it. But we could cut these out and kind of get an idea of what we have. And then here I have a dolphin. This is a little bigger. You can see the size difference. So it's a little bigger. And these shells, I think, are too big. 
Let's see these, see how big these are. That one might be okay. And I like the look of that. So we'll go with something that has the marks on it because then we could keep it that way. And we have this shell as well. And then we have some sea grass. Like I said, I'm not sure what I'm going to be using yet, but we could play around. Okay. So that's a good start. Let's see. Come on. Clean that up. All righty, put that off to the side as well. Let's clean some of these up. All right, and this one. Get this cleaned up as well. Get my paintbrushes. And we'll start with the little turtle. So I'm going to try to do some blend in here for my colors. So I just have a little makeup brush, that's all. And then I'm just going to go right over my clay. There we go. So all my pieces are done. Look how beautiful they all look. I'm excited. I can't wait to put these on and see how it all looks. So now I just have to wait for my cup to cool off. And then we can start assembling everything and get it all done. My piece is out of the oven and I ended up taking my paint markers and I painted some of my piece here. And I didn't go over all of it because I'm not sure where exactly I'm gonna place these yet. So now that everything is cooled off, I decorated it, I got my paint on there. And the next thing I wanna do is get my um, clay adhesive. And I am going to Hold on, let me get a new one here. Here we go. So I have my Sculpey Oven Bake Clay Adhesive. And now I just want to figure out where I want to set my pieces. So I like to start out with the turtle. And I am going to just take my clay adhesive. I am going to put it on my mat here. And I'm just going to get my paintbrush and I'm going to get my turtle. And then I'm just going to put some of this on here. And 
And I think I'll stick this first one, maybe, let's just go right down here. So just dab it to make sure it's on there nicely. I've got my fish and just take your little pieces here, put the glue on the back of it and then set them wherever you would like on your cup and just spread them around. And then it's going to have this beautiful 3D look. Let's get you right here. So I kind of want to just look for like an empty space that I haven't painted yet and then set my pieces um, in that area. And then you're going to get this really cool 3D look throughout your cup here. You have quite a bit on here already. So you can see our 3D look is starting to come together here. I kind of want to put those standing up. There we go. I forgot our little dolphins. Gotta make sure we include those. You can see I am just placing these all over my entire cup and just really making this piece pop. All right, let's see where's the other dolphin. So that one's there. So I'm thinking over here somewhere. Maybe we'll go down like that. Hmm. And we might have plenty on here at this point. I don't think we're going to add anything else because we're pretty full. I don't know if I really want to overload it. I okay, could maybe right there, but. Okay, so my next step is I want to get my rub and alcohol. So I'm gonna get my rubbing alcohol. I wanna spray my Q-tip and then anywhere that I kind of got um, the, mic the micro powder from the pan pastels on there, I just wanna wipe that clean and then take the dry end and clean that up because I don't want that to be on my piece. So just look over your piece carefully. Clean up any spots. Okay, so once your piece is completely cleaned up and you're happy with it, then we can put it back in the oven and I'm gonna bake it for another 30 minutes and then we will come back and we will complete it. All right, so my cup is out of the oven. It looks gorgeous. I am super pleased with it. I love that nobody but the person who is using this cup can see the inside. I mean, look how nice that looks. I hope you guys can really see the inside of there. I mean, just beautiful. 
And then the outside, I love how it has that 3D texture and it really just pops out and paint and just little odds and ends here and there, I think really help bring it out as well. So our last step is to use food grade resin. So I already mixed my stuff up and I'm gonna show you another way to put this resin on. So a lot of times I will just use a brush, but if you get your rubber gloves, you can do it a different way. So I have my cup here and what I like to do is place my thing on here to completely dry. But the first thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure you have something that this can drip dry onto. And then get your resin. I wanna put a little sparkle into this. So I have just a little bit of like a blue green glitter and I'm just gonna add a tiny amount. I do not need a lot of glitter. I just want just enough to kind of make it sparkle. And then I'm going to stir this up as well. So you can see there's not a lot in there, but there's enough that's gonna make this piece kind of pop. So just stir that real well. This particular resin, you get about a half hour to play with it, but you will not need that long to put it on your cup. And then I'm just gonna, so make sure your cup is handy. And then just pour a little bit on and then use your finger and just go right over it. And you just need a um, thin layer. You do not need a lot on this. And you could get over each one of your little characters. Try not to do globs on it. I did sand the very top of this um, after it came out of the oven and cooled off. I just wanna make sure I got every little area Okay, set that down and then read your directions and then just let it sit there and completely dry. And when this is completely sealed and cured, we'll come back and then we will see the results. And here is our final piece, guys. I let it cure for um, 36 hours, and I think it looks fantastic. I am super pleased with this. I love the 3D look of all of this, and I absolutely love that you can see the um, silk screen marks inside, and it's almost like a little hidden thing it gives it a little extra to it. And I really hope you guys enjoyed creating this along with me. I also wanted to show you before I go that these little these little mats here, look how perfect 
This stuff comes right off. All the resin comes right off. So you don't have to destroy anything. I mean, how fantastic is that? So everything will come right off for you. So if you do a lot of resin work, definitely get these mats. They're fantastic. But I really hope you enjoyed creating this with me. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.